that I use. And the normal paper is a Fabriano, which um, is a hot press and is £190 minimum. Um, you can use thicker, but unless you're doing a really large flower with um, a lot of uh, wet into wet colour, um, you don't need to stretch it. It works perfectly well as it is. You can get it in Artistico, which is a creamy colour, which is this, this colour, or Classico, which is a really white, white, which I find a little bit difficult for some colours. It depends what I'm doing as to which paper I use. But the white does reproduce a lot better um, than the cream. Brushes, I use a size 4. You can see this is an old one which I use for mixing and this is my current new one which you'll see has a really really fine point and then I use a little scrubbing brush for scrubbing out. I use a, an ordinary propelling pencil for doing the drawing and a putty rubber for taking out, when I've done the drawing, just take out a little bit of the pencil so that you don't have too much of the pencil going into the watercolour. This is particularly important if you're doing yellow flowers because it does muddy the colour. Now the subject to be in front of you to be exactly the same as the one here because the one I did earlier died. But uh, it's similar. So in order to get the correct size you imagine a sheet of glass in front of the object and measure the berry onto your page. So it should be, because obviously when you have foreshortening, if you were to measure it like that, you wouldn't get the correct um, size of the leaf on the page. So your dividers always have to be vertical and then it's measured onto the page. Now, if you're doing a very complicated layout, something with a lot of flowers in like this, you may have to do each individual flower and then you want to position it in a different place on the paper. And you can use a light box to do that from ordinary paper. But I usually just do my design on layout paper and work straight onto my watercolour paper. And I was always working my sketchbook with the colours before I actually attempt on them. I used to just put the colours on the side of the paper. But of course, when you have your piece framed, you've no longer got a record of the colours you use and what you painted. So I do use my sketchbook. And it's a good idea to have some idea of mixing greens. Start with the yellow and add a little bit of the blue gradually so you have a record of all the greens and you can match your green to your leaf without having to fiddle about. So two glasses of water, one to wash your brush in and one to pick up water to mix with your colours. Now I use the old brush in the colours and this is a scarlet cadmium red D. I've put the detail down here and I've put a wash just of plain water over this berry and I've just outlined a little area of highlight there so I would leave that out make sure you've covered all the area I'll do two wait till that is not dry but just a little bit shiny and then go in with your first colour keeping your edges very sharp
dry the brush <coughs> and just soften the edges around the highlight. Just dragging a little bit of colour into that area. So I would then do the leaf. It's more important to put a clear wash on first when you've got a large area. As smaller areas you can just go into the dry paper. So where the veins are you take the green whichever way the light's coming would give you darker green towards the vein. I do try and vary the colour as I'm putting it on. If you have every leaf the same colour, the, the, the painting ends up quite boring. And uh, When you look in nature, they're not all the same. It's quite a reddish browny colour. I wouldn't wet the stem as I'm putting that on, I would just While that's still wet, if you can add a little colour onto the shadow side. <coughs> when that's dry, I would go in and deepen up the colours on this one. I'm almost drawing with the brush. And don't worry, the highlights seem to be rather large because you can adjust that with a wash over the top at a later stage. I had my palette prepared with a lot of colour which had actually dried on the palette and working this in as, as a dry brush technique which means that the paint is dry in the palette so you're just picking up a little bit of colour on the end of your brush and stroking it on very almost in as you would if you were doing a graphite picking up a little bit of blue there just to shade You see how that's coming on in a bit more detail. More green again as we go over. And at this stage I start to sharpen up the edge because they're quite um, indented. So I would make that a little bit more obvious at this stage. This is where the phone usually rings and I think, oh no, mm -hmm. go away. <laughs> I've done this one down here with a bit more detail. The third stage now. So I'll get the uh, darkest of my reds, which is the alizarin, and a little bit of quinacridone, which is a really good red, and a little bit of blue in there.
stay away from. Just go over the highlight just to dull it down a little bit. But you can see this uh, leaf is coming up quite quite well now, so put another, another layer on here. Always intensifying the shade side. But then we can go over that at the end with a little yellow just to take in the veins so they don't look quite so prominent. I'll do it on this one so you can see. And then the little, um, what were the stamens at the end? I've just done in a sepia duck with um, French ultramarine here, yeah, but I'm just going to draw that down a bit because the white paper is showing through too much. Highlight's gone, you can get us quite a stiff brush. It's scrub out the highlight and get back the white on the paper. It's just clean water. It's just clean water. Man. 